Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. I am tired and so you're watching SDTV. People say that the security of a country depends, sovereignty of a country depends on two things. One is the energy security and other is technology. Now, when the energy is at least at the generation level, Pakistan has supple. Criticism is coming that it's not green. And obviously, there are some coal plants and other. China has announced the green BRI. They have come with a green initiative, green BRI. Can we green the CPEC as well with this, especially when the phase two relocation of industry is going to take place? And obviously, bulk of that industry would be relocated from eastern China to here if it comes. But might be needed some greening painting at least for the energy sort of greening it. So we have today with us Director China Center NAST, Dr. Scholar Sun Yihong. Yes. Doctor, very warm welcome. Say something on it, and we just okay. First of all, uh, assalamu alaikum, my dear Pakistan friends, and uh, I got the information from 18th October <coughs> after the conversation with um, China chairman and the whole world. We already changed our economy from the normal economy to the green economy right now, and I believe human beings share the same future. So we are talking about something really can change and be a sustainable way for all human beings. There's no boundary, no nationality. Human beings share the same future. And like you said, technology and energy. So what is the plan for greening the development, especially with the lens of the energy? Uh, we have two steps. First step is compare and find out where we can prove. Compare with, um, like Pakistan can compare with Malaysia. Similar population, similar site, similar location. And we also can compare different countries. Then we will find out they are using energy. We are using energy. If similar population, that means consuming energy quantity should be similar. But how much percent of them, they are covered by wind energy, solar panels, and those green energy? And how much we are depends on the fossil energy? So this is the first step. We need to have our own faith and belief. We can do it. So the second one will be all the projects which we are doing right now, can they change it to the solar panel or new energy? Like we already have so many hydropower and the dam, but we also have so many construction even for the office building. But for this office building, since we can foresee uh, energy time, can we use some other painting? Because in China, we have a painting. It's like oil painting. After you paint it with the grid, the wall itself gives you energy by sunshine. Right. This is the second step. <clears throat> and third step, definitely, we need to manufacture in Pakistan for this technology. We right. need a joint venture. That's Do it. you think Pakistan needs some, Pakistan need to absorb some its absorption capacity? So do you think China need to fund some institutional setup for training uh, people and the thought leaders and everyone? So it can, obviously, the financial envelope might come from there. Relocation of industry, but at local level, making it green and absorbing it, that needs thought process and R&D and all. Are you looking forward and communication setup for that? China is looking forward to do that? First of all, it it's a fantastic question. You already have the idea of ecosphere because you mentioned thought, education, training, mm -hmm. and then you mentioned investment, financial mode. So you already in your brain, you have an ecosphere feeling. China is emphasizing that ecosphere is the only way to solve problem. We call it a triangle ecosphere. It is study, mm -hmm. research, and industry. So what China wants to do is that, first of all, one project is related with six things, time, location, people, reason to start, how to start, and what will be the result. Totally, there are six, um, we can say, essences. So the thing is, 
China is preparing in separate, in different segment of this education, like vocational education. I did a KKH. The problem is Pakistan people are so good, well educated. They know all the technology about how to make a kernel. Unfortunately, our education did not bring them the most advanced machine for them to manipulate the machine. So when its work happen, it's a problem. So vocational training is emphasized by China and 2022. China issued the first vocational training law and they support Chinese vocational training, um, the teaching material to go to Pakistan. This is supported by China government. And second thing is about the thought. Chinese solve problem in another way. Pakistan solve problem in another way. Which one is better doesn't matter. We can combine both advantage. Right. Yeah. Think tank is one way to do it. <coughs> but by practicing, we need a small, small site to practice and do it together. How does this happen? China wants to bring samples in Pakistan. And then when people see it, definitely people need to go to China. Do you think you need China need to understand that it should be communicated at the horizontal level and the vertical level so we can club it together? So for that, they need to finance uh, communication setups and all that for here? Well, first of all, communication is a big gap. To be honest, we are teaching Chinese students, uh, Chinese languages to our students in China, uh, in Pakistan. The first thing is the language problem. No. Come on, let us face the fact that Chinese language is hard. And Chinese language hard, hard is simple. This is done by a really splendid uh, language scholar. He said, word is a symbol. So it matters with what, how do we th think. But the problem is not here. Communication is not frequently. And one more problem is, we are thinking in another way. Like, I'm selling this cup to you, okay? I'm selling this cup to you. So who is the less important people? I am the less important people. Pakistan give beautiful blueprint for the future, but we need to consider what can China get. Actually, this is win-win situation. China also can get. So this, for this kind of game, we need to explain China. You put financial for more communication. Then people get trained over there. Then these people will work over here on your side. So that will be an Ecos Fire contract. From the beginning, we, we put an office here with the electricity and water to employ students for vocational training in China. From this moment on, it should be contract. The tuition fee in the beginning, no need to pay. It's possible. I have this program in my hand. And I successfully did one program. Students do not need to pay. But their tuition fee will be paid by their company who hired them in the future. So they have to work for this company in the first year only half salary because that half is paid for previous their tuition fee. And then when they grow into energy uh, engineer or um, senior engineer, they will have their own, because China support them, China give them policy to open their own company. China give policy even with free office, free water, and even with the employment fee. So then they can apply for that one. This equals fair may happen. But all of this, we need to think what does China want beforehand as well. Not like what do we want only. Right. So uh, towards the fag end of this program, uh, what is in essence this greening of uh, BRI generally, how it's going to by solar system or by other means or what the president, she said that? Sacrifice. Okay. Uh, fossil energy, like the coal from Pakistan. We use it, make electricity, then make our factory work. To be honest, today it is much cheaper than solar panel. Solar panel, we need to put, like, let, let's say, 300. Then fossil, we only need to pay 100. But this rate will go down. Means if we pay solar panel, three years later, our payment will be much less than fossil. But who can make the decision to sacrifice today's interest for the future? Green energy, everybody can see. SDPI is here. 
SDPI kind of organization in every country, we can see. But nobody makes the decision to sacrifice today. For tomorrow. For tomorrow. So green energy, simple sacrifice. Is there any way to, way to fund somehow to compensate for the businessman and for the entrepreneurs? at least in the beginning, so they can pay back later on when it becomes cheaper. There are some, must be some model. Are you thinking on that as well? Definitely. Financial mode. Financial, any financial mode depends on one thing, trust. Like today, I pay 300 to solar panel. But in the future, I can earn because I make more energy. I even can sell with the grid. So in the future, it will be zero cost. So averagely, because if I use fossil, it would be 100. Averagely, from the third year, averagely, every year I'm earning 200. This is the future. The future also means trust. If you trust it, then I can sell you those uh, from the th uh, fourth year to the fifth year. Those interest as a stock share kind of uh, a financial product to bank and to the second market financial market. Unfortunately, no matter the stock exchange in Islamabad or in Karachi, it's really hard for them to directly put this concept into the trust or stock. So legally, we cannot do this. That's the problem. Otherwise, the banks and the financial system, hedge fund, and we can put a lever on it as well. People can share today risk with tomorrow uh, interest. People can do this, not by one organization, impossible, by all human beings, like Chinese people buy as well. Today I put 10 rupee for your solar panel. After three years, every month I will get 10 rupee back. We can see that. We have calculation, we have formula, we have mathematics, but the trust need to be authorized by the government. Right, thank you very much. So the bottom line is that there should be trust, like uh, Francis Fukuyama wrote a book on that as well, that it's a fourth kind of capital, human capital and financial capital and other capital, and this is the kind of a capital. So trust is very important. For that, we need communications to make people understand and communicate for that. So I think it's what it's more a war of every war today, the, I will say the war of uh, climate change or against nature, everything. It's war of narrative and whosoever wins the narrative is going to win the war. With this we come to the end of the program. Next program, uh, keep watching our uh, television series and bring you more programs. Goodbye for now. Mm -hmm.